Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films, continuing the position review, as you saw in the title, Guard Center Time. And we're going to split this up into two videos. We have seven guys to talk about. Gabe Ferguson from the Situation Room joining me. Gabe, what's going on, man? How are you feeling? You know, not, not too much. I'm excited to be here to talk a little bit about these interior offensive line guys. It's one of the biggest question marks, I think, in terms of competition going into the season. So I think it's going to be a good conversation. Definitely, definitely is. And uh, you know what? At the beginning, I was thinking about this too, Gabe. I want to give a shout out to uh, Cole Jackson. I would have grabbed Cole for one of these old, old line shows, but Cole has a lot going on at home. So if you're watching by any chance, Cole, I love you. You know, I definitely would have asked you to come on, praying for you and your family. And uh, we're thinking of you. I think I speak for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people have reached out to you. So, yeah, Gabe, thinking about my man, Cole, you know, I would have grabbed him for one of these old line shows. Yeah, I mean, Cole is, is, is one of the best when it comes to talking about offensive line um, breakdown. So we try to try to do him some justice here and, and definitely have him in our thoughts and prayers right now. There you go. We'll try to do you justice, Cole. We'll try to do you justice. So on this show, Gabe, we decided to split it up into two shows because we have seven guys to talk about. Let's talk about three guys tonight who have the inside track to start at both guards spots. And that, of course, is Ben Cleveland, Tyree Phillips at that left guard spot and Kevin Zeitler, the incumbent at right guard. Looks like his spot is safe. You, you want to talk about Zeitler uh, first before we get into the other guys? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Zeitler obviously came in last year, um, let go by the Giants, um, and, and he, he was pretty much the the stalwart, I think, of the offensive line last year. He was really the rock there. Um, he, you know, we had a year where, where, where Yonda was gone, and that right guard position was kind of a question mark, and then, then Zeitler comes in and, and really reinforces it and makes it, that rock again on the offensive line. So, you know, he's, he is getting up there in the years he's been in the NFL a long time, but, you know, I'm expecting him to keep coming back and, and have a good year in 2022. He's, you know, he's, he's one of those guys you just can count on. He's really good in pass protection. I think that's his specialty at this point. He's a little bit better of a pass protector than a run blocker, just in terms of his athleticism, but, you know, he can also get after in the run game. So he's, he's definitely that guy you can really count on. And, and I'm glad that he's going to be sticking around at least for one more year. Definitely, definitely uh, just a security blanket. Uh, yes. He was, I would say the best player on that line last year, but yeah. I mean, Bradley Bozeman has a case for it too, but Zaytler was really consistent. I thought, uh, and, you know, uh, something that also worthy pointing out, that right guard spot is becoming more and more important because they're matched up with the oftentimes the best defensive lineman on the other team. And that can be a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Kevin Zeitler went up against all the three techs out there, held his own really well. Uh, and I'm, it's a, just a confidence building to have a steady player like that on the line. Now, Gabe, I, I did notice um, towards the end of the season, it I seemed like his play – to me at least, slipped, not greatly, like fell off a cliff, but it seemed like he kind of wore down as the season uh, continued. Did you notice that at all, or is that just me and, and what I saw? You know, I didn't notice that specifically. Um, I think the end of the season last year was kind of a difficult time for, for everybody watching the it's Ravens. Kind of true, very true. Um, it was probably difficult for the players as well as, you know, they're mired in that losing streak. Players are going down left and right. Um so I don't know specifically if he, he kind of wore down. I mean, it could be, like I mentioned, he's, he's getting up there in years. Um, I, I w it wouldn't surprise me if this might be his last year in the NFL, to be honest. I know he's on, under contract for one more year, but he has been around for, I think, probably 11 years now. He, I think he's it's yeah, been quite a while. Up, it's been um, a while. Yeah, so I think he's on, like, his fourth contract. And he's, I mean, he still has – a high level of play, I think in him and, you know, maybe, you know, having some better players around him will help reinvigorate and hopefully let him, you know, play at, at his, at his standard for a full uh, 17 games season. I mean, he's a good player and, you know, let's face it, Gabe, you know, pass protection, I agree with you hundred percent was really steady. And uh, that's the most important part. You're talking about trying to execute offense, a lot of passing plays, and his feet are really good in the run game. So he gets there. It's showing that he just turned 32 in March. Uh, he's played since 2012. So 
it looks like this is uh 10 full seasons going into his 11th season yeah. if my math is right on that so so yeah a lot of good football a durable player i think that should be pointed out too play really he's played well uh wherever he's been i, I mean followed him in cincinnati a little bit he was good there yeah. the giants had a similar situation to what we had where it was just a bunch of moving parts around him so it'll be nice, especially with the additions that we have, the uh, more depth at tackle and the new center coming in. Zeitler's going to be an important player. You know, he made uh, what Ken calls the line calls. You often mm -hmm. see him tapping the center on the side, telling him when to snap. And he might be tasked with that again this year with uh, a possibly a rookie center starting. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely probably going to be the case, um, and we'll, we'll see how the how Linderbaum you know comes into the equation and what he's ready to pick up in terms of responsibilities. Um, you know, when it comes to like line calls, things like that, um, sl uh, slides, slide protections, that type of thing. Um, but you know, one of the hallmarks I think of Zeitler is he's a very cerebral cerebral player. I think he's he's very intelligent. Um, you can kind of see him you know looking for work at times. Like he, he's kind of always available to kind of help out along the offensive line. Um, and th and that way he does kind of remind me of, of Marshall Yonda. You know, the veteran savvy. You know, he knows how to position himself. He knows how to help out the players around him. And I think you know as the Ravens try to get younger, um, especially you know as a center, they're going to be getting younger this year. I think that kind of veteran presence is going to be really beneficial to the team. It really is, and it's it's a it's a young interior offensive line uh, overall. I mean, even you know Cleveland and Phillips, they're going into their second and third year. Uh, Tristan Cologne, three year player, so it's a lot of youth around him, and uh, that that mentorship. If he even if he doesn't seem like a outspoken guy to us, or you know extra uh, dramatic on the field. I mean, that's somebody that can teach you how to be a pro, somebody that you're going to want in the meeting rooms throughout the week when you're trying to game plan for somebody. And, man, I'm really surprised just from a physical standpoint of his movement skills. They got, you know, there are times when I think he would be better off at left guard leading some of these counters and pulls just because he's so natural and fluid as a mover. You, you see it in the pass protection, just really, really consistent. You also see it in pass protection because he's not someone who's often going to get crossed up and beat quickly. He's able to stay on his feet, trust his feet that it's going to be quick enough and lay down the anchor when he needs to. So really, Gabe, when I'm looking at Kevin Zeitler, I see a, a complete football player. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he has really great functional strength. I think he's not someone who's going to, you know, give ground against a defensive tackle. For instance, he's coming with bull rush. Um, he really has that ability to to maintain his his presence um, in, in the run game. He's, I wouldn't consider him a mauler, but I do think he still moves well for his for his you know his size and his, and his I guess age as he's getting older. Um, and it's going to be interesting, I think. Um, as we look into this upcoming season, how the Ravens' offensive um, scheme evolves and, and what they're going to do in the run game, um, they were primarily a, a gap team last year, um, and, and you know Zeitler wasn't used as much of a puller as we've seen as, as some of the guards. Generally, they've used the left guard to pull more than the right guard in recent years. So we'll we'll see how that evolves. Whether they go more to a zone type of scheme or or kind of mix it up and kind of be like a very um, you know, diverse run game. And I think, I think that's something that I'm interested to see what, what direction that Greg Roman takes this offensive. Um, and especially the the run type of, of offense that we're going to have in this upcoming season. Gabe, that's a great point. And something I want to stick on for a second, because when I look at the offensive line overall and Morgan Moses, he can still move. I mean, I've, I've seen the, I've seen some tape of him. He can move a lot better than most right tackles. Linderbaum's known for his movement. We talk about Zeitler's movement. If Ronnie's back healthy. He can move. Tyree can move a little bit. Ben Cleveland's fast. Still to be determined. But overall, you have a more athletic offensive line than we've than we've had since uh, really since 2019. And uh, we saw the flexibility in the run scheme that year. I think some of it of uh, that success was it being so new to everybody, but also that those guys like Matt Skura could do a little bit of everything. So when you're talking about incorporating maybe some more stretch zone concepts, and it might even expand to the pass game with some screen passes. I mean, we're, we're terrible in the screen pass. So hopefully we get some linemen that can get out there and, and block and incorporate that to our, into our game. But just the, can you speak to the mobility on the offensive line at all? Are you seeing it 
much the same way. I would imagine. I would imagine that that's going to be the case and give Roman some more options. Yeah, I think I think the two guys that you mentioned that really stand out to me as as additions that will improve the athleticism and the mobility are are Linderbaum, who I think I think will be significantly more athletic than any center the Ravens have probably ever had. To be honest, like he's he's an incredibly easy mover. He's so athletic. Um, you know, he reminds you of like a young uh, Jason Kelsey, for instance, um, or even an older Jason Kelsey. He can still move for someone who's been around for a yeah. while. Um, and, and then getting Ronnie Stanley back. Um, you know, Stanley, I think, was a little bit of underrated as his ability to kind of move and, and pull from the left tackle position or, you know, get out in front in some of those power um, schemes that we, we saw, especially in 2019, um, when, when that offense was clicking at the highest level. Um, and it's, it's going to be, you know, I think a breath of fresh air to kind of see that type of versatility that they'll have. Um, in 2022, especially after, you know, last year where everything seemed so difficult up front in the offense and the running game was just really a challenge to get working. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing this offensive line come back together. And I think, um, you know, there's some teams out there that come to mind, like like what the Philadelphia Eagles did last year in the second half of the season. They really kind of, kind of turned back the clock and went back to a fu- fu- fundamental uh, rushing game, and they use a lot of the same principles that the Ravens did. Um, a lot of they did some, you know, some zone read, which the Ravens have done in the past. A lot of counters, you know, some of the counter bash that we saw start being implemented back in the 2020 season. And I think with these type of players on the offensive line that can move, that can pull, um, it's going to give the Ravens a completely open playbook. And, and Greg Roman can kind of identify how he can attack different defenses depending on what their strengths and weaknesses are. And I think that's really going to allow them to kind of be that um, unpredictable and, and really exciting, fun team to watch again. There you go. So what are your general thoughts on the left guard battle before we get into them individually? Ben Cleveland, Tyree Phillips. Tyree Phillips was banged up last year. Ben Cleveland started the last four games did especially well in the Pittsburgh game, but up and down play from both of those guys last year. I think Tyree uh, was more up and down. Cleveland was just kind of feeling his way into the league, it seemed like to me. But what are your, you know, let's let's just cut to the chase and talk about the overall battle. Who do you like? Uh, what do you think would be best for the team? Any way you want to take it? So I would give the early advantage to Tyree Phillips. And I say that simply because He's been the Ravens' starting guard for two years now. Um, they, they drafted him in the third round to be a guard. You know, he was playing tackle in college, but when they announced the pick on draft day, they called him a guard. I think that was intentional. I don't think they wanted to draft him to play right tackle. Um, they wanted him to be a guard. They saw him as a big and athletic guy who can move and he can move people. Um, I, th- I think that that's where he is at his best. Um, they've had to play him in tackle at times because of the injuries. Um, but if he can be healthy and stay on the field, I think he has the most upside to play a left guard right now. Um, for Ben Cleveland, um, you know, I think they also like him a lot. They obviously also spent a third round pick on him. I, th- I think he might be more of the right guard in the, of the future, you know, once once Zeitler retires, I, th- I think that's how they might have envisioned him. Um, I think he might have been someone they thought might need a little bit of work in terms of his development. Um, we saw him come in last year and be a little raw at times when he was on the field. We saw some really impressive play at times, but also some of that um, limitations that I think come with him as someone who doesn't have um, kind of the diversity of skill set that you might want from a starting guard in the NFL in terms of what things we're talking about earlier about, you know, the different types of run blocking, for instance, I think right now he's a better pass blocker than a run blocker. And the Ravens really want to get back to that uh, dominant running game. I think powers is the guy that is probably going to give them a better foot forward, at least at the start of the season. I'll tell you with Tyree Phillips, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he started Phillips. Phillips, Yeah. He's uh, he started the season as a starter. His yep. first two years in the league, yes. he was he started over DJ Fluker at right guard in 2020, and then last year with that left guard battle, he was the starting left guard to open the season. Last year, he was banged up a little bit uh, yep. throughout the season, and then of course, you know had a had a it looked like a pretty uh, I don't want to say serious injury, but painful injury towards the end. And when Cleveland took o- took over, so from that standpoint, you know it's clear that the coaches trust him, and I'm excited to see Tyree Phillips finally get to concentrate at hopefully just one spot, the left guard spot, 
And, uh, you know, especially when you have a guy like Pat McCary who can play anywhere, you, you have the, the ability now to not need Tyree to plug all the holes. That can be McCary's job to say, look, Tyree Phillips, concentrate on left guard. Mm -hmm. See if you can win this left guard job again. Get your footwork right. Get into some kind of a groove because it's been really unfair from my standpoint of how the Ravens have just continued to move Tyree around the line. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You know, he started out at right guard. Like you said, he was kind of battling with Fluker a little bit in preseason and training camp. He won that starting job um, and then got hurt pretty early. I think he um, either broke his hand or had an injured hand of some sort, um, had to miss a few games. Um, there was then some, you know, turnover. I think, I think you know, Powers might have come in and been the backup there. Um, but then um, last year, once again, beginning of the season, starting left guard, went down in the first game at the, in, in Oakland and then he was, he was gone, you know, for several weeks. So um, I think it would be great to have him just be able to take that position um, really take, you know, I guess, you know, that opportunity and run with it because I think he does have a higher upside um, is it, in his ability to move um, in his ability to just be, you know, you know, everybody talks about how big Cleveland is, but Tyree Phillips is, also a very large person you know he's like i think six foot six um he's very physical um and if, if he can really be unleashed i think this can be a really dominant offensive line if he can play up to his potential and yes i love the player and i want to see what he can do i love his potential i think is a better way to say it i haven't loved everything i've seen from him i think that the mental part of the game is something that has taken him some time and you see that with offensive linemen gabe because it's not just mental it's physical. Like these guys need to bulk up, get their quote unquote man strength going, get some, but you know, as their bodies continue to grow. And then of course the mental part of playing the offensive line and then asking them to play two, three different positions or four, really, I think everything, but center he's I've seen him actually in a Ravens uniform, whether it be preseason or uh, regular season, Tyree's pretty much played everywhere. So I'm excited to see what he can do excited about his potential this year as a left guard and I'm going to agree with you here on the if I had to handicap it I probably say 60 40 that Tyree is the starter I think it's close but Tyree has the advantage I think in just overall experience and I think Ben Cleveland not being here for OTAs I don't like to make a big deal out of this but I haven't seen him at OTAs he was on Jeff Zerbeck's absences list I don't know if he showed up since but man, for a young player battling for a spot, I would like to see Ben Cleveland at these uh, OTAs really just getting in and trying to get into the program as as deep as as deep as he can. Did you did you notice that? So I don't specifically remember him being absent, but you know I'll take your word for it. But and if he was, that's surprising to me because that's not something that you want to miss as a young player. You you want to be out there and taking every opportunity you have to demonstrate your worth. You know demonstrate your progress to show that you have developed from year one to year two, um, whether that's changing your body or changing, you know, your, your mental ability um, to process. Um, and I, th I think that that's a missed opportunity for him. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, I hope that he can be in the building. I'm, I'm sure he will be once yeah. the mandatory um, OTAs start coming, but yeah, that, that's something that, that surprises me, and it's, it's a little concerning. I don't know if it's a red flag or not, but, you know, I'm not sure if that's a good sign for his probability at starting, for sure. Right. Now, I want to make sure that I show some compassion, too. It could be something family-related yeah. or something we have no, no idea of. So I don't want to speculate on what's going on, but when I was looking at the guys who were practicing, I'm paying attention, you know, I'm seeing if Juwan James is practicing and, you know, hoping to see some of these injured guys in there. And, uh, you know, Ben Cleveland was on the list. I'm like, man, that, that kind of surprises me. You know, first thought, I hope he's okay. Second thought, um, you know, he needs to get his butt in there if he wants to compete for this left guard job. I mean, there's there's only so much you do at OTAs. A lot of it is meeting times and stuff like that. But it doesn't hurt to be there. Like, if, if you're the new guy on your job and you're fighting for a position, you want to be at the, you know, in the boss's eyesight as much as you can. So, uh, it may not mean a lot to fans. It may not m make him a better even football player being there, but you want to be there uh, and accounted for like the rest of your teammates who are, are you know, working hard uh, as a guy going into a second year who hasn't established himself yet and has a chance to start because, man, Ben Cleveland in that last game versus Pittsburgh 
was uh, he finally unleashed it, Gabe, to me. I'll probably flash the highlights up here now in front of our faces. But if, you know, for the first time, it looked like he wasn't thinking. It looked like the game was coming to him. And he was matched up on Cam Hayward a lot. More than held his own. Just a great game from Ben Cleveland. Obviously a hawking figure and a guy that I agree with you. I think his upside could be a right guard because I would love to see him at the point of attack moving people in a right-handed running offense. Yeah, I think that's probably where he's best suited because I, I don't think he is as mobile as, as Phillips, for instance. Um, you know, he, he tested pretty athletically at the combine, but just functionally the way he moves, he seems very stiff. Um, you know, if, if he's gone um, at a yoga retreat instead of being – um, at the OTAs, I might give him a pass because I feel like he needs to get more flexible in, in his lower body. Um, that, that's one of the things that you can see kind of not just the way he moves, but you know, on film, the way he walks, he just, he doesn't have that kind of like um, ease of movement, especially laterally that I think you need if you're going to be part of like a very mobile offensive line. So if he's able to kind of be at the point of attack and move someone in front of him, I think he has that physicality and the ability to do that. Um, but if he's on the move, I think that's where he's struggling a little bit, and, and that's where he needs to improve his football. No, I saw him on a couple of pull, pull blocks really hit home, but uh, that's something that's more uh, – you have to get a feel for it more than just like – it has as, as much to do with your effectiveness as your actual quickness out of getting out of the blocks and really getting on somebody is finding that guy and being able to be crafty with it and say, okay, we have this guy and moving to that guy. Uh, you know, there's a lot of brain work and work on the fly that is involved when you're playing left guard and you're pulling a lot. You have to see where the defensive guy is. You have to anticipate some of that. So Ben Cleveland, you look at his 40 time and some of his explosion numbers. He's an explosive athlete, uh, but there's more to that than or more to pulling than just being an athlete. And I would love to see him, uh, like you said, a number of times this year. Of course, he'll be battling for a left guard spot. If something happened to Kevin Zeitler, I'm not sure what they would do. That may be McCary's spot. But in the future, I could see Ben Cleveland's uh, future in this league at right guard. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, and part of that starts with his pass protection ability because I think that's really where he excels, similar to Zeitler. Um, I think he's a better pass protector than run blocker at this point. Um, he, he has a good anchor. Um, I think he can do well um, heads up over a defensive tackle, like a three technique. You mentioned Cam Hayward earlier. Um, that's the kind of player that you're often going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one at, at right guard. And I think he does have that ability um, to, to be a good, solid uh, guard in this league to do that. And I think um, maybe that's something that the Ravens are looking forward to to in the future, you know, after this season to kind of have him slide into that role. Um, obviously, we'll see if if Zeitler um, is is held on to for one more year. He'll be going into the final year of his contract in 2023. Um, so, you know, if he has another great season, there's a good chance that he's kept. Um, but, you know, there's also a chance that he, he might get low, let go for, for salary cap purposes. But, um, you know, I think he's the player that probably profiles at least the ones on the current roster as being the best right guard of the future on, on the current roster. I feel it, man. I just, I would love his power at the point of attack. And I think that his pass protection is uh, something that is kind of like uh, tough to figure out if you, if you try to explain it to somebody because we're talking about, okay, this guy's a little stiff. He's real powerful. Those aren't terms that you would associate with a, a pass blocker. But this guy, you know, he is hard to get around, and he and Ben Cleveland is very patient in his pass protection. He's very trusting. He does not panic. He's under control. Uh, he had, I think, uh, ridiculous stats in Georgia as far as sacks allowed. I mean, we're talking about in the SEC against the best competition. So Ben Cleveland has a history of good pass blocking, and, you know, the early indications from last year, is that he is good, you know, if, especially for a rookie, was pretty darn good at pass protection. Gabe, I expect that to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. And really, like you said, from that right guard spot, that's, that's what you need for, first and foremost. A lot of people look at it as uh, we, we need a mauling right guard. But when you're facing the best pass rushers in the game at three tech, the inside pass rushers, you know, pass protection is, is crucial. Absolutely crucial. You can't, I mean, even for pressures, Gabe, you can't have somebody in your quarterback's face all the time. You're going to have to have a plus pass blocker at right guard. If you're going to have a plus offensive line. 
Yeah, and, and just to get back to what you're saying about the the right guard position and why, and why that's often considered the the more difficult of the positions is because generally when the offensive line does a slide protection, you're sliding to the left, and that means that the right guard is then heads up one on one on that three technique, and he's re responsible for often you know matching up with some of the best defensive players in the nfl that's your aaron donalds that we mentioned hayward all these other guys you know the fletcher coxes all, all these guys who play three technique that are very athletic very physical very powerful and that's where you need to be at your best and and it's difficult at the time you know that's why marshall yana played right guard for for you know he, down the stretch and he he was that guy who was able to to match up with those players so i think that um if he can aspire to be that high end right guard, that's something that the Ravens definitely could use, and, and something that is is not an easy position by any stretch. Um, I think we've seen the value of the guard positions really become more important in the NFL, um, and, I, and I think it's it's especially as you have these really like impressive defensive tackles who are you know sometimes getting double digit sacks on, on a regular basis. Those guys are also you know hard to match up against, and if you have to fight them one on one, you have to also be able be big and strong and physical. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, the defense overall is getting lighter. The game's kind of getting lighter. So it's not like these big fat guys that used to have to block at right guard, you know, for lack of a better term. I mean, these are athletes on the inside now that everybody's getting more athletic. So pass pros there. But, you know, Gabe, I feel like uh, I'm going to wrap it, wrap it up on these three guys by saying I feel pretty good to good to almost maybe even very good about – our chances to get good play out of the left guard and right guard, like above average play. I think our chances are good. I think Kevin Zeitler obviously is solid between Ben Cleveland and Tyree Phillips. There's a ton of potential there and we've seen good games from them. We gave our reasons why we think that they can improve Tyree Phillips, just leaving them in one spot. Ben Cleveland obviously looked like a different player the last time we saw him. And then of course you have Patrick McCary, and Ben Cleveland, McCarry's played well wherever he's been. Powers, a little bit different story in my opinion, but with all those guys, with all that experience, both a mix of young, being young and having experience on that line, I feel like in both guard spots, the Ravens are going to be more. Yeah, I think that the depth is important, obviously, and that's something the Ravens have, you know, have, lacked at times i mean they've generally had a lot of bodies but quality bodies that's something that has, has been kind of up and down um I, I think there is some variance that could happen at, at the guard position this year you know we talked about you know the the battle for starting left guard um and these are two players that have at times played well but at, at times have struggled too so we we have we're looking optimistically at this and saying you know in, in year two and in year three, we hope these players are going to, you know, really be at their best now that they're, you know, kind of more focused, especially for like Phillips, who's going to be more focused on playing guard this year. Um, but, you know, there is going to be some potential for, for low quality play too. I have, I have to, you know, just bring that. I think there is a little bit of that potential. Kevin Zeidler, we mentioned going into year 11, there's a chance that his play falls off. Like you said, he, you saw at the end of last year. So I'm, I'm not going to be like, super expectant of it being like the best guards that we've had, you know, in a while. But I think that potential is definitely there if if they can put it together and stay healthy. Um, it, it's really going to be just a matter of health. I think that's the most important thing. We've we, we've been decimated on the offensive line. And if, if that can happen, if we can, you know, get the same guy out there for 16 games at left guard, I think that would actually be something that's really important to see. 17 games. It, it would be great. Yeah, 17. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're getting old. But yeah, you know, uh, that's that's very true. Some continuity. Yep. You know, if this is a playoff team, it would be great because we've been seemingly been just moving all around at the guard spots the last few years. Zeitler was a sight for sore eyes last year, man, just uh, starting and playing well the entire season. So I'd like to hear from the viewers on this one. Uh, don't be afraid. If you haven't commented before, leave me a comment down there. I check the comments at least for the first few days that the video are up. What kind of shape do you think we're in? Are, are you more nervous about this? Uh, are you confident about it? Who do you like in the left guard spot? Did anybody see any decline in Kevin Zeitler's play last year? They like said, for me, it wasn't anything major. It was just I noticed him getting beat and pushed back and bullied a little bit more often than I saw in the regular season where he strung together a lot of good games, uh, at least from my opinion. 
And then, uh, you know, Ben Cleveland who, or Tyree Phillips, who do you think will start? Who do you think is the better player? Uh, all good topics to talk about. So I'd love to hear from the viewers. I know sometimes people get shy, but we keep it cool, man. Gabe, the family's – my comments are pretty good, actually, over here. <laughs> like, if people don't get too wild. I always say, like, I don't know if I could have my channel blow up and have, like, 50,000 subscribers like some other YouTubers and – have the comments go all crazy. I kind of like our, I like our family the way it is, man. You know what I mean? Like more the merrier, of course, but our family's pretty cool over here, Gabe. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, I, de I definitely have seen that. You know, there's some really smart comments and people who are really into the Ravens, obviously. And that's great to see. And I think the thing that I'm most interested in is, is the thing we've gotten at from the very beginning is who's going to start that left guard position. I, I like to see people's opinions on that. Is it going to be Phillips? Is it going to be Cleveland? Is there going to be a, a wild card? Maybe maybe Macari, maybe Powers? Well, I, I'm curious to see what people's opinions on that are going to be. All right. So I'll say I'll say 0% for McCary. Okay. I'll say I'll say because they're going to want to save him, I think, for yeah. wherever. And I'll say 60% right. Phillips, 40% Cleveland. So you want, can you put any uh, hard numbers on it here as we sit on uh, June 3rd? I would say I would probably lean a little bit more towards Phillips. I'd probably be like a 70-30 towards Phillips. Um, and I would agree with you that that Macari is probably a lock to be the sixth man. Um, assuming there's no injuries, um, that, that he wouldn't have to start. But I think that they want to keep him as that guy who's versatile and can come in and play really any of the positions if needed. Um, and then and then we'll see if Powers is even on the roster. We'll, we'll see if that happens. There, he might be a trade candidate potentially or something down the line because, you know, he's, a I think, a starting caliber player, but his upside, I think, is a little bit limited. Um, and, and I think we'll talk a little bit about him in, in the next one. So we won't. We'll just do a little tease about that. There you go. Yeah, we'll save that for the next one. Doesn't never hurts the tease, uh, in my opinion. Uh, to keep it clean, but uh, but yeah, um, Gabe, uh, great great commentary on that. And it, you know, the the last thing I wanted to say, you made me think of something, was you know I think Harbaugh overall is going to be more protective of his players during the preseason, but left guard, Gabe, like. Like, I don't expect Kevin Zeitler to play maybe even at all in the preseason, but how are you going to find out who you like between Phillips and Powers without putting them out there against some different colored jerseys and different schemes than, you know, just some live game action? Like, I feel like Harbaugh is going to have to play both of these guys in the preseason, uh, and, you know, and that opens you up to an injury risk for, you know, for us being uh, kind of scarred about that, man, kind of scarred. Yeah, it's always tough that that question, especially if there's a position where you want to see some competition. I, you know, I think there's definitely going to be a little bit of play out there, and then we'll probably see. We'll probably tell pretty early on by who's not playing that who's the favorite. That, that's generally how it works. Right, right. If you're playing in that, yeah, well, it used to be fourth preseason game. We'll see how coach handles it. I don't even want to speak on it right now, Gabe, because I don't know how he's going to handle it, but uh, very interesting. So with that, I like to say thank you to our football family. Love my football family. Gabe, thank you for sticking around for part two. Part two will be up uh, uploaded soon, so I hope you guys continue to watch. We'll talk about Linderbaum and and uh, and get into that. So, Gabe, with that, say goodbye to the people, man. Thank you. Bye, everyone. It's, it's fun. We'll talk more about the offensive line in the next one.